purpose of the National Employment Authority, we talked about how the youth was dropped so as not to leave out anybody, but the youth do form 85% of the unemployed in this country, and its purpose is basically to carry out surveys, find out what skills are needed, and advise accordingly the training institutions uh, on what skills are needed so that they can provide those, that particular training. Deline, how did you receive that news? Who would you have liked to see uh, chairing the National Employment Authority? Oh, wow. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Olive. Well, it goes without saying that I was shocked, obviously. And just as my colleagues said, I feel it is a violation to the public trust and also to the youth at large. Because year after year, election after elections, we've always had the government say, we'll give more opportunities to the youth, we'll create more opportunities to the youth. Just like my brother said, uh, initiatives such as the Youth Enterprise Development Fund, the Weso Fund, we don't know where they are right now. And such initiatives are what are supposed to provide, or rather give the youth platforms, especially the youth in the creative arts. It should provide for them opportunities to take loans for self-development. But where are they now? We don't know. So I feel it is really, really a public violation. And the government obviously has not kept its promise. And if we keep waiting for the government to create employment for the youth or give jobs, which I can confidently say, there are no jobs. Jobs are scarce, you know? And if you keep waiting for them to give us jobs, I think it's, it's like waiting for Moses to part the Red Sea, you know? Mm. Which is close to impossible. So I really feel that that position would definitely would have been given to a youth. Okay. Who, for example, would you like to have seen chairing the authority? Well, we have so many youths. We have myself. Yes, mm. even myself. So, but uh, generally... Um, there are so many youths who could have been given that platform. Mm. Not only to mention specific people, but it could be even a public announcement, you know, so that the relevant people or people who feel they meet that criteria will have applied. And I feel it will have been a, a fair process. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll come back to you, Enoch. You, yes, you made yes. reference to what President Ruki Kenyatta said when he appointed yes. Moody Awori to chair the sports fund. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and he said the young people are just not trustworthy. Do we just want to get rich too quick, do we not have a work ethic? Okay, I disagree with that notion. And um, I'm, I'm so disappointed to hear that somebody we really trusted and we elected um, and uh, we thought he was going to champion, you know, the feelings and um, our goals and objectives of, of the youth in the country. And when it reaches, you know, in, uh, in such a situation, what I can only just advise the youth, Let's just create our own things and start doing our own employment online. I mean, what else are we going to do? Because if the president himself can answer such words and say that it's about mistrust and nothing else. And um, let's just go back to what um, is required of us to get even these jobs. We always go there and this is what we are told. What's your experience, right? Then if you do not qualify for that job, what do they go next? What connections do you have? Then uh, if, if you don't have a connection towards that particular job, then um, um, what skill do they want from you? They will find a way of nullifying you out of that job. Mm -hmm. So well and good, as much as we would say that we are waiting for the government to do something for us, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen or live anytime soon. So what I'm just trying to say here is um, let them have their own jobs. Digital communication, I'm actually a very big ambassador of digital communication, that's why I'm doing my graduate studies at USIU um, um, for my uh, master's in, 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 um, in all the social media, everything that we have around. And um, if you could see on what statistics have, I mean, go on to history back to 2003 when LinkedIn was created. It was founded in uh, 2002 and launched in 2003. Why is this platform available? As much as, you know, most of the corporate institutions do not embrace, and I really don't have statistics to say whether they really don't look on our CVs that we post on LinkedIn and many of the other platforms that can really enable us uh, get such jobs. Eh? But what I'm thinking is, let us stop this narrative of we're waiting for the government to create jobs for us. Let's just do our own entrepreneurial skills. I mean, let's go online and uh, create crazy things. I mean, somebody else somewhere said that fake news sells. I mean, as long as it's not illegal, just go and do something there, you oh, know? goodness <laughs> me. All right. But the government does yeah. have to provide an environment that is conducive mm -hmm. to young people uh, pursuing business and succeeding uh, in that pursuit. Mm -hmm. So you talked about the, the opportunities that are made available via uh, the Internet. Yeah. 
so uh, Diana, some of if, if the government government were asked what they do, what they're doing for the youth to create employment, they maybe the reference Ajira, mm -hmm. which was meant to capitalize on that, mm -hmm. and and NYS, mm -hmm. are they limiting which is, which is no longer yeah. the youth? <laughs> Are we limiting the youth? I mean, thank you for actually uh, saying that the government's role is actually to create an enabling environment for the economic actors to thrive. Mm -hmm. And rightfully, as he has mentioned as, as well, is that the youth need to create their, not to create their own spaces, but to Op to take the chance to optimize the digital platform or the, you know, the, that, re that whole revolution that is happening around. Um, I would say the government maybe is trying. I would not speak for them. When I work in the civil society, we are supposed to be the, city, the citizen watchdog. That means that we watch out for the public interest on what the government is doing. As you pay your taxes, whether it's through employment, whether it's through the public goods or whatever you use, then you actually deserve to have a service from the government. And such are these authorities that are created to, be, to enable the young people to optimize the opportunities that are there. But we feel like they're not doing as much as they could. And we don't think it's just literally for the legislators, because we, we've had of online conversations where we're asking where are the young legislators who are in parliament or who are in the, uh, uh, the assemblies, the county assemblies and the national assembly, what are they doing on our behalf? Are they just keeping quiet and watching the executive do as they please? No, they're also supposed to be there to play a role. They need to come together and convene. We have seen when uh, the women unite behind gender advocacy, when the two-third gender bill was not passed and they were walking and saying, this is not what's supposed to happen, they united. So we are calling upon the young legislators, those in the corridors of power, to call out the executive for this uh, these evidently exclusive forms of appointments or opportunities being given to people. And the private sector is, I think, is trying its best through the, um, I think, KEPSA, the Kenya uh, Private Sector Alliance. I think they've done so well in trying to ensure that youth are included in, 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 in the private sector engagement. And even in terms of economic governance, and when you're looking at growing a country from a third world country to a first world country, which is somehow encompassed in our vision 2030, which is to see Kenya being a globally competitive uh, country by 2030, you find that diversity, workforce diversity is very important. You can't have a bunch of old people sitting alone trying to make uh, policies or decisions or creating an enabling environment for young people in future. Mm. It will not happen. This uh, 70 year olds and 80 year olds and sometimes even 90, this, yeah, the 90 year olds, how will they project how 10 years from now will look like? The bare minimum, and this is a discussion we're having offline again, the bare minimum we can take is can they consider having experts, and I say experts, who have not yet reached the, the retirement age, yeah. for instance. And why like that, just ensure that the youth are included in the conversations, because we know what we want for our future. I can confidently, you know, God willing, say that 30 years from now, this is what I envision for Kenya. Can the same be said for, for the people that are being appointed? Let us have futuristic views. Even as politicians- you have something invested in the future. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and I would also urge the young people when you're, when you're voting, think of that politician who will carry the policies for 30 years to come. What do they envision for your county as they lead your counties? What do they envision for your constituency? Even in the word levels, that word representative that you're having, do they have a vision? Mm. You know, we need to now awaken our youth consciousness. And I'm glad to see young people here. These are the people I interact and we with the every day. Of the voters. We are wow. the majority yeah. of the voters, but then we vote for the people who will come and disrespect us on, on national platforms and tell us, what do you want me to do? If I give young people a chance, this is what they do. We are supposed to say no, we do not take it, and we also call upon the leaders that we have elected who are young. In fact, I would say the members of county assembly, 50% of them are youths. They are actually below 35. This is the MCAs. Those are young legislators. Yes, in the county level, but they're still legislators. Can we call upon them and say, you need to come out together, collect yourselves and say no. Because when you come together, then they will listen. The executive will listen to the young legislators. All right.